Hi everybody, my name is Volta Bass and I am a 2D animator. I've been working with Clip Studio Paint for quite a while, so in this video I'm going to teach you some tips that if you're a beginner, they could help you. I know that when you're starting, one of the biggest challenges that you have is trying to find the right timing for each keyframe. So we're going to solve that problem using keyframe shapes. That way you're going to have better control of the timing and it's going to be a lot easier to achieve the result that you want. And for this tutorial, I will animate a simple energy beam sequence. This is my workspace and um, it isn't too custom. The only thing I believe I changed from the default is the size of the keyframes in the timeline panel. I like to have them displayed as small as possible to be able to see as many layer folders as I can. So the first thing that we need is a couple of keyframes with a character at least, but this isn't the purpose of this tutorial, so I'm just gonna speed things up a little bit. So now that we have our two keyframes, um, we are going to set up a light beam charging animation coming out of his hands. This is like a really typical effect in anime. And the idea with keyframe shapes is that we are going to use a single drawing or a single shape that we can use and move with each keyframe we add to the timeline. So the first thing we need is to create a straight line and a separate layer. And the reason why I'm not using a triangular shape, just as you see in the sketch, is that whenever the light beams are rotating around the sphere, there's a change of perspective and size, and I just want to have enough freedom and control of each individual line. So after creating this straight line, I will just copy this layer. We're going to be using a lot of this, so it's going to come in handy if you just keep copying it instead of drawing it every single time you need it. The first thing we need to do is to enable the keyframes for this layer, so now every position, sign, and rotational change will be saved. So, given that the lines are going to be rotating around the sphere, you need to move the pivot point to the center of the sphere, and then you start rotating from there. Now you repeat the process with a second layer, and now you have the first keyframe for the first ray. Now we need to move the ray to the second position, um, I'm going to use 13 frames for this, but we can adjust that later. That's the purpose of this whole thing, so it really doesn't matter that much for now. And after you do that, the second keyframe is added automatically to the timeline. And if you press play, you can see how it moves automatically between these two points. To create some anticipation, I'm going to choose the first frame in the timeline. I'm going to add a keyframe there, I'm going to move it all the way to the end, and that's going to stretch the first part of the animation and then it's gonna jump to the second part. It's gonna have a little bit more anticipation, it's gonna be a little bit more dynamic. Now we can repeat this process for every single position. Um, it is important that you do it every few degrees, uh, so you can have as much control as possible. And after finishing, I had two revolutions around the sphere. And then you can just do exactly the same for the rest of the beams. Now what I would like to do is to have all the these lines um, into a final set of keyframes with solid shapes instead of individual lines. So for this I'm going to draw the border of the sphere and the area around the fingers. This will give me a close loop which I will be able to fill with the bucket tool and will give us a solid shape for each keyframe. So the next thing that we need to do is to create an animation folder. And for the first frame you can just grab the bucket tool and fill all the beams and it's going to give us an individual layer with a solid final shape in a single folder. And of course, we just repeat this for every single keyframe. Now, for web visualization, I'm going to change the colors of the rays with a new clipping layer. The way we do it is to create a new layer on top of the animation folder, and then we clip it. And so that means that everything that you draw in the clipping layer is going to be reflected in the areas of the layers below. So for now, I'm just going to paint it all white. And here we can see our fire animation for this first part of the process. To add a little bit more of movement to this part of the animation, I decided to create a circle that then we can keyframe to create some sort of shockwave around the sphere. As you can see, we need to do the exact same thing as we do with our lines. So I needed to move the pivot point to the center of the sphere I keyframe that position and then change the size for the other keyframes. After I was done with that, I did the same for another circle. 
after that, I just decided to make a moving background. Um, for that, I just hand drew every single layer with a marker and then added that directional blur. That gives you a better sense of movement. To make this mess a little bit more manageable, I put all of this in a folder and decide to add a shaking camera effect. For this, you just create a 2D camera folder and then we pick the operation tool. And with that, you can select the option, show camera field of view. This will allow us to see what's going on in our screen as we keyframe the camera. And this is how it looks the first part of the animation. Now the issue is that the change between the frames is like really, really abrupt. So to try to create some sort of transition between them, I drew impact frames. And you can be somewhat liberal with this as long as the flash with a white background and they have a decent timing, you can, you can make them work. And now after having that transition, I'm going to use a dark background to create the necessary contrast of this energy beam in the second part of the animation. And for this beam, I'm going to use a circle as a reference. And just as you did with your lines, you can keyframe each position and size change that you want in the timeline. The important thing to remember is that for this part, the circle will change its X and Y axis. So it's going to be independent. So you need to go to the operation tool and deselect keep aspect ratio option. And that will allow you to stretch the circle as much as you want. And to add a little bit more of movement, I create these circles and keyframe them uh, to create the illusion of a shockwave going backwards. But again, as I said, uh, these shapes are meant to be used as a guide. So instead of just using this as a final frame, we can use them as a base to draw the variations we want on top of them. So I just created an animation folder and I drew every single frame by hand. And this can be done to your liking, given that they are just quick change in geometry, there's really not a consistent fluid change between the shapes. And then after I was done, I just copied the blur background animation I drew in the first part, and then I changed the color of the layer with a clipping layer. And just like we did with the first part, I put everything into a 2D camera folder and created a shake animation. And now we just press play and we can see our finished animation. And this is like a very simplified example of just how to be practical and to be able to show all of this process in a single short video. But you can truly build upon this. You can add a smoke effect on the top, a more fluid animation to the energy beam, movement to the clothing and the hair of the character, for example. And that's about it. I hope that you guys found that useful. I'll see you in the next episode where we are going to keep exploring these techniques. And if you want to check out my work, you can find me by the name Volta Base on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And that's it. See you in the next one. Goodbye.